नमस्ते वेलकम टू बर्डिस्तान आई एम कीर्ति एंड दिस इज मैक्स एंड बोथ ऑफ अस डिस्कस बर्ड्स इन डिटेल टुडे इज बर्ड ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज पर्पल रंप्ड सनबर्ड पर्पल रंप्ड सनबर्ड इज आल्सो नोन एज शकरखोरा इन हिंदी एंड इन मराठी पंचरंगी पक्षी सूर्य पक्षी पंचरंगी इज बेसिकली फाइव कलर्स इन दिस सनबर्ड सूर्य पक्षी सनबर्ड sunbirds are very very small birds uh, purple rump sunbird can be called the hummingbird of india isn't it max yes you can also call it hummingbird of africa and asia cuz they are no real hummingbirds, hummingbirds found all over africa and asia in fact zero true that's a vital information we should keep in mind so purple rump sunbirds are our hummingbirds all of you who have been uh, fascinated by the way hummingbirds work you can just enjoy purple rump sunbird in your locality in your neighborhood and they will please you as it is a very good alternative rather than yes, just it is. buzzing they actually are very agile and good looking in fact not they dull are. the only thing that that is different from the hummingbird is they don't flap as fast so they probably they any people either. know a lot about the hummingbird here in india but uh, I know. they always expect that hummingbirds will be here if we put, put a few flowers uh, but in fact they will never find hummingbird there's no chance of it because there are no hummingbirds in india unless of course you find a vagrant yes and this a vagrant means somebody uh, basically a bird which is accidentally found in a certain place due to when it's supposed to be Whatever found reasons. in yes right max uh, so let's come down to purple rump uh, sunbird how does it look how would you know when you spot one this is the one because there are so many tiny birds and we don't know often which one is what how do we know what are we looking at so for purple rump sunbird uh, the male and the female they both look little different so we must know how the male looks and how the female looks to know when exactly you are looking at the purple rump sunbird although the name comes as purple rump it can be very misleading for first timers who are going to spot it because they are going to be looking at that purple color they may think there is going to be purple color on the sunbird and they can spot it but the rump can never be seen because it is hidden under the wings true wax adds the best things uh, of the information so the rump part cannot be seen easily unless you see the bird from up when it is flying down to you from your angle only on the rump side you can see the purple otherwise it's generally hidden with the wings settled on the back hmm. uh, so to identify the male purple rump sunbird uh, what we are looking at is metallic greenish shiny head small head these birds are so small they are uh, around 10 cm or less so they are tinier than sparrows sparrows are very common all over india and people know how big they look whether male female juveniles but when you look at sunbirds they are almost half the size of of sparrows isn't it max yes so when you are looking at this is a light small really small you may think it's a juvenile sparrow those who don't know in fact i before starting birding i thought that any tiny bird is a small sparrow i didn't know there were so many varieties of birds so ever since i have seen sunbirds and i have researched more about them i have begun to know so many more birds that exist that are smaller than sparrows but they aren't juveniles of sparrows but they are all unique birds so purple rump sunbird male will have greenish metallic dark green this is dark green black metallic shine on its head the back would be brown color maroon to brown color and then the neck area this entire area has a throat area is maroon to violet shine it generally shines just from like from certain head. angles only you yes. can see so when there is a light reflecting on it it will shine otherwise it looks blackish it listens yes and then uh, the breast area is lemon yellow so it is actually quite bright, vibrant for you to look at and you will instantly know when you get this combination dark throat and just below that the breast area is lemon yellow so the lemon yellow will give you for sure that you are looking at some sunbird because there are other sunbird varieties as well such as crimson red rumped sunbird crimson backed sunbird and there's the purple sunbird which yes. you might be mis- mistaken for so a uh, purple rumped sunbird male will have the greenish metallic head the 
ring around its throat dark color it can shine well, maroon the only way to mistake them is with the females of these two species true the females look pretty the males similar. they can be distinguished very easily only the female can be hard to identify if you compare the purple ram sunbird female with the purple sunbird female mm-hmm. look for the whitest throat yes of the purple ram sunbird female now the Uh, the male description let's finish with that so yes. that people know for sure uh, what all they are looking at and then after the breast uh, the lemon yellow also goes down a little bit towards the belly side and then after that it can become whitish the flanks that is the sides around the leg area of the bird which you can see Side below the, the belly. below the wings is white in color and tail will be this small so that is the description of the male the wings and the crown are generally chestnut brown or chocolate brown and they shine sometimes they do shine and oh. iris is red black yes. black and the first the eye is reddish reddish yes they they have a downward curved bill yes which is adapted for taking nectar and they have a spongy tongue which is tubular That's so smart. Max knows much more about birds than I do, and he cannot resist at times. But talk about them when he sees somebody is taking so long to describe. So I am very happy that I have a companion like Max who keeps things to the point and very quickly. Now we discuss the male. How does it look? Like Max said, the bill or the beak would be curved, medium-sized, sickle-like beak, and that is made suitable for nectar sucking. just like hummingbirds but hummingbirds can have really long beaks these have small medium size ones mm-hmm. this small they, they are generally to their body proportion it goes well mm-hmm. it does not look out of place now for females females are much plate paler and may also be smaller in size generally when you spot them so the female the back of the female will be olive olive color to light brown color back the throat area will be grayish to white and the belly color would be very light lemon yellow that is how the female is distinct from the male and don't it will have slender body and don't forget that they have a faint supercilium or a stripe on the eye yeah it's hardly noticeable so unless you're looking at them through a binocular maybe you know may not be able to see the supercilium maybe you could mistake it for a wobble if you could see the supercilium very well but not the beak true so the beak as well as the lemon yellow color will tell you this is a female sunbird certain warblers have yellow bellies True. making them very easy to mistake you really need to observe the beak first then you observe the rest you must of the look body. at the beak first yes hmm. just like max said to identify the female purple rump sunbird because it is not as striking when it comes to colors or appearance as the male is otherwise the female can be identified first with the beak and then rest of the description like the light uh, brown to olive color on the back uh, the belly would be light lemon yellow and throat would be grayish to whitish uh, as well as the size would be similar to the male but not as puffy but little slender slender and then the sounds will match so you will know generally male and the female are playing along together so when you see the male you may be able to lucky enough to see the female as well or when you're spotting the female you may be able to see the male as well around so they are generally together that's how you can spot these uh, for the young ones the young ones look more like the female so they don't have as striking features developed as the male so when you're looking at the female it could also be a juvenile now let us know what are the specific measurements of the bird how long the bird lives such as life span it's close relative to the purple sunbird lives for 22 years in captivity so the purple ram sunbird may also live in the captivity for this long since they are similar then they weigh 7 to 11 grams yes and as you know the length is 10 cm or less yes they are really tiny so 10 cm or less is their uh, measurement as a length and uh, they can live up to 22 years in captivity may but, not be in yeah, the wild in the wild it has not been observed yet so there is no data sure data how many years they live uh, due to purple sunbird which is close relative uh, we know that in captivity it has lived up to 22 years also 
there are not known predators of the birds so maybe they must be living pretty long but their weight is pretty light so that also deters predators from attacking them because they don't really get much meat hardly 7 to 11 grams is not enough for any other predator bird to even spend any kind of effort to chase the sunbird mm. For all of you who are interested in birding by the year and eager to know now after knowing the purple rumped sunbird, how does it exactly sound? Have you heard it before in your locality when you were sitting in the house and some bird was making this sound? What you are looking at is the purple rump sunbird. In our locality, the sound normally is si se, constantly, just si se. Many times. Mm -hmm. That can also be. You may be able to hear a small sound right now. Then they also make a siu and su sounds locally. But uh, based on written information, it can be pitch si pisit. T2, 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 T2. Wow, Max, that was nice. That is a good set of sounds that you demonstrated here for everyone. Uh, their whistles are really mild. So uh, you will not mistake them for other birds because sparrows can be, their chirp sparrows, is louder. Sparrows, basically the chirp can be like wood clap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> k -k 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 -k. But more milder and more sharp and still. Mm -hmm. Not deep. And the sunbirds are more like, uh, if you're comparing two things, it's like small rats making ch 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 sounds. So it's basically the sunbirds make soft, very gentle whistle-like sounds. Like Max demonstrated, sometimes the sound is ch 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 soft, soft sounds. And they go on and on for some time. It's difficult to count how many calls do they make in one go because they stop, it's random. They stop, they start, they stop. Maybe sometimes two of them are doing it together. So it's uh, very difficult Maybe for a person. Maybe it could be an entire family group doing it together. Yes, they could be the entire family group because they are known to be living in family groups as well. So it could be many birds You could see many males living together. True. People would often think that the best sign to identify a bird is a male with a female but this is an odd bird really because multiple males coexist together instead of fighting. Because normally in other birds you would notice that, that males keep a distance. Yes, but here they like to, they love group living, family living. Mm. And they are spotted too in that fashion. Now let's find out what is the habitat, a usual habitat for purple rump sunbird or where all people can actually find them. Max, mm. any ideas where are they found? I've discovered that they can be found in forest clear winds and, and just land used for commercial living, mm. suburban gardens. They, mm -hmm. I mean they can literally be found land even without trees but mainly flowers. Mm -hmm. You can say well maintained gardens. Well maintained gardens, that's wonderful. Of course they need a lot of flowers because they are nectar sucking birds. And also they stay away from dense forest. True. Uh, I, I do not know personally what's the reason behind them not liking dense forest or rainforest. But they Maybe definitely... they eat too many snakes. Oh yes, that could one of uh, that could be one of the deterrents. They managed to avoid snakes by living in suburban areas instead. True. Uh, so these tiny birds, amazing, beautiful looking birds can be found in your locality if you are living in Maharashtra, if you are looking, uh, if you are look, uh, living... You can live uh, in the southern half of India. They can, they are found in whole of Sri Lanka. In fact, the nominate subspecies found in Sri Lanka where the purple rump sunbird began itself, yes. later came to India. Its scientific name is... Its scientific name Leptocoma is... Leptocoma zelonica. Yes, Leptocoma zelonica. That comes from the nominate form of the bird that is found in Sri Lanka. Now they can also be found in, in western regions of Bangladesh if you are 
from that country and in india almost all over india apart from i would say the north. himalayan belt yeah you can say north. entire north india north and west india they are not found so if you are living in madhya pradesh if you are living in karnataka if you are living in andhra pradesh or also if you are living in assam uh, you would be able to spot these birds if their family group is around your home uh, especially in urban gardens so i encourage uh, all our young birds to have flowers flowers around the more now more is, flowers that is, can they say that they're extending the wings to gujarat to the west yes and now they even come into myanmar also they may be extended no one knows properly it's undocumented but believed to be extending so our surya pakshis are willing to be with us are we willing to welcome them in our life now let's find out what do purple rump sunbirds eat on a daily basis as we already know their name is shakarkhora that means they like nectar we mentioned several times that they take nectar from flowers but which are common flowers or their favorite flowers that they would like milkweed large leafed mangrove also known as oriental mangrove yes. and more locally and more. over here the drink from neem Yes in our locality right outside our window they often come to the neem tree uh, that is flowering right now i think the flowering starts uh, from spring season and it's ongoing and we can see the purple rump sunbirds male females both are uh, spending many many minutes uh, many times the day they come and they spend I've a lot of time i've seen them also do nectar theft and <laughs> cuz i can see that they puncture the flower instead of actually drinking properly and pollinating it and when they punch it a lot of nectar falls and just falls under the ground droplets of it on the malabar trees they are commonly seen by us dropping a lot of nectar there yeah, where dirty they did not drink all the nectar they just make a hole and then let it leak yeah sometimes i think they can be little uh, notorious not to care for the flowers that they are eating from and they its reproduction cute. responsibility has been foiled they happen to kill the flowers that they are taking or sucking stealing the nectar from by rupturing or puncturing the flowers premature cuz uh, normally they just to take the nectar while while ethically. putting head and put pollen on head at the same time instead of just taking the nectar you have to take the pollen only then it's worth taking the nectar if you cannot take that then it's nectar theft true max they are not that environmentally mm. cautious it seems uh, but it's a great sight looking at them when they are uh, sucking nectar they they usually suck nectar not like hummingbirds hovering around the flowers but they perch and then they take the nectar mm-hmm. so it's a different thing when you see a hummingbird taking the nectar which is generally hovering not sitting in one spot but for uh, purple rump sunbirds they perch on the tree and then take the nectar they keep jumping from one small branch to the other uh, and they keep doing this for many minutes at a stretch and then again they will move on to some other tree maybe go 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 to some other place then again come back in the same day again do the same process many many times a day so if you have a huge tree that also has flowers especially neem there are more flowers that the purple rump sunbird drinks from like fire flame bush which is very common in gardens all around then there's a second flower the red head bush red head bush just red head yes also known as flame bush again so most garden flowers can also attract many many purple rump sunbirds now if you are wondering this is about the adults adults are taking the nectar sucking the nectar, nectar and drinking what happens to the nestlings nestlings the take insects the adults uh, give insects to them so insects is also part of their diet they're good at catching it yes so they can take insects and feed their hatchlings in the making nest making them typically omnivorous yes true max so this is what purple rump sunbirds feed on on a daily basis they eat a lot in spite of their body weight or their size you can be misled by the size of purple rump sunbirds they can be found mostly busy sucking nectar from flower to flower uh, some people also like to put a uh, mixture uh, what what do you call that sugar mixture well Sweet but that does not really is work really cuz purple rump sunbirds they only find where flowers are where flowers are they're not going to drink if there are in your mixture true if there are no flowers around then they won't be found either so there's no you strand feed them with a bird feeder or any nectar or sugar 
mixer. No, we have tried that many, many times. <laughs> it, it does not work. We even knew obviously that the purple worm sunbird would come specifically to our window, but wouldn't take the nectar even if it comes or not. So the only thing that you can do is just plant a few flowers, not try yes. to get good camera shots of it sitting at your window or anywhere nearby. Go the natural way. That's what works more. As we know, well-maintained gardens is very different. Also, if, if you think uh, you like uh, purple rum sunbirds coming around to your windows or near your homes, uh, they also get very attracted to cobwebs, spider webs. Yes, they often go searching at buildings for spider webs. That is when they are caught by people. Then they go at gold-coated glass makes them see a reflection of their own. And they keep pecking at it or knocking it, just communicating with that reflection. There's instead of going anywhere, they will stay stuck there for some time and keep actively moving. You and you have a very good chance of getting very good pictures. Yes. And and impress your friends and relatives. In fact, we experienced it when we were on a vacation uh, in Palghar in Maharashtra. Uh, it's a district in Maharashtra, very yes. big. And uh, when we visited there, uh, there was uh, the house where we were living, the bungalow where we were living, it had gold-coated uh, glass windows. Gold-coated are the ones that reflect back on it's the outside. It's the standard here in India. Yeah. But seem to have also done something extraordinary at the same time. True. Attract a lot of birds. Uh, so these sunbirds had a timing. Literally by 7, 7.15 in the morning, they would come and start knocking on the window. Mm -hmm. You, uh, We initially thought that they were trying to communicate with us and we would get really overexcited about it. So get up, start, take the camera, start clicking pictures, etc. Not, do not use flash because they can then run away and not come back. Uh, so we would be very uh, overexcited that these birds are coming to talk to us. Uh, for the first couple of days then we realized actually they didn't even know we existed behind that glass uh, in fact they were only looking at their own reflection and they were trying to uh, knock on it to check if it is there or not uh, it is also a habit of many other birds like uh, uh, oriental magpie robin they also come they, yes we had the same situation they are pretty aggressive at the same time we had oriental magpie robin trying to Wage war at our window looking at its own reflection. <laughs> because they are very aggressive with the other males. Uh, male to male cannot, uh, you know, stand together. So they tend to fight with each other and that's why it was coming and hitting on the window. Uh, they can come and bang themselves against the window uh, thinking that they are getting into a fight with another bird. So this is a common phenomena if it happens to you. Uh, consider yourself blessed because you're lucky to have birds coming around all the time. Purple rum sunbirds can breed throughout the year. So but all round year they can uh, do breeding. But especially, yes, Max? Monsoon. Monsoon is specially suitable and they do more breeding during the monsoon season. Uh, they can raise two clutches of broods in one year. Yes, they can do that. Hmm. And at a time they lay two eggs. Uh, the nest building generally takes place uh, uh, or the nest is built generally by the female purple rum sunbird while the male accompanies her while she does that mm -hmm. so the collection of the material can be done by male and female but the building process is generally done by the female purple rum sunbird uh, the materials that are used in it are plant fibers um, Cobweb. cobwebs on the inside and on the exteriors to make it stronger they also use pieces of bark like flying seeds flying seeds and they, they finally line it with the fuzz of fuzzy covering of a seed from milkweed. Yes, in India we know this milkweed by the name Madar, the poisonous plant, if you have ever heard of it. Uh, children or people aren't supposed to touch it unless they know what they are handling. So they uh, grab the seeds of them, they take out the fuzzy part of the seed, the covering, and they use it as a lining on the inside to make it more comfortable. So they are pretty methodical when it comes to nest building. And once the nest is built and ready for breeding season, uh, what the female does is it starts staying in the nest few days in advance, even before the legs are laid in there. And the, once the, the legs are uh, eggs. once the eggs are laid in there, then it takes about fourteen to sixteen days for incubation. For those of you who do not know the meaning of incubation, it means it's heating the eggs. Yes, by for the them point. to develop from the inside. 
and that is done by male and the female both. Mm-hmm. Both of them take turns and they uh, incubate the eggs. And once the eggs are broken, the hatchlings are out. It would take them around seventeen days or so to become fledglings. Basically, to, to, to develop feathers and fly. Yes. Even after that, the male uh, or the father's uh, purple rump sunbird can continue to feed them for a few more days. And in this entire process, you won't believe purple rump sunbirds are very family oriented. They're monogamous. And also, the partners are monogamous. Monogamous means one partner for the entire life. Male and female both prefer one partner for the entire life. So what happens is in the breeding season uh, with the nesting process and everything, uh, taking care of the eggs and the hatchlings, other juveniles that were born the All prior the females years, from the previous brood will help out in feeding the young. Yes. So they all take care of their young ones like a community. It's like a community living together and helping one, other, uh, one another out. Uh, that, that's very interesting about tiny birds that can have such communi- community spirit. At display. Purple rump sunbirds uh, do not, uh, at least, not known to have uh, any predators that actually attack them or can cause concern for their population. There's not even a real threat which has been identified of theirs, and their conservation status is just least concern. Least concern. Maybe the population is unknown. Yes, population sometimes cannot be known in numbers. But for sure, we know one thing. They are very common. Yes, but their numbers uh, not declining declining at an alarming rate. Uh, Probably they have not been declined there, but they are increasing. Yes, is what uh, the uh, ornithologists or the observers keep in mind. So if there is any bird that uh, is uh, that is to be seen, uh, their numbers is declining. That is when it is alarming for uh, ornithologists. It can become near threatened status. Means conservation efforts are done even before it becomes space with the threat. Yes. So as of now, their conservation status is least concerned. That means uh, they aren't under any threat. Uh, no bird or other predators are known to least be concern is harm. always given when the population is n- not affected by any known threat and is completely safe and the population is very stable. Constant, yes. Um, Max, do you know they also like dew bathing? Yes. They dew bathe on large leaves on raindrops to bathe. Yeah. So during rainy season, they can be pretty active. Uh, whereas people or uh, commonly people think that rains can affect uh, birds and their outdoor activities. Of course, for purple rocks and bird, one raindrop is already way a lot of water. A lot of water, for sure. Mm-hmm. But during rainy season, you will see them more uh, often than other seasons, especially when it is not raining. They are out and about and they will be perching on trees when, uh, you know, you can just have a good look at them, take out a good picture or a video of theirs. Uh, so... Uh, it's it's a good sight during monsoon season because they are more active during the monsoon season for sure and people who like birds coming you know getting attracted to them if they remain still and don't make sudden moves in front of sunbirds a purple rump sunbird it can also come around you because they do not have fear uh, uh, you know from humans or others as long as you're not spooking them by making sudden moves so they can come around you if you want to attract them Thank you.